With it being on your screen, you can you can dig offset with the tilt rotator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you never lose your mat, you never lose your line, or you don't you don't need to see it because it's in the screen. It's a good oh. addition to the uh, to the GPS. Did a godsend, didn't it? Once you make you match that with a GPS, it's a dream. Like I was saying, that they do an offset boom system now. So, like for railways, you can be on the tracks and dig either side. If you had a machine like that, you won't have to even move. No, all day. you never do. Backed up, spinning round digging. So the diesel it saves is ridiculous. How like really specific is the dig? For, so like when I've done stuff before, the dig's really just like oh, and the concrete waste is there. Is this the most accurate way of doing it with both the machine control and five millimeter, uh, ten mil. I would say 10 mil accuracy. So you're saving a massive amount of money. Massive, on stern alone. Well, obviously house footings are concrete. So you just, there's never a low spot. The thing is as well, when you're marking out footings, if there's like a kick in the footing, or it's a bit of a weird shape, you know like these stupid offsets of windows and stuff? Yeah, yeah. You just mass dig it, because you can't be asked putting all the pins in, because they're going to yeah. out. So you just get a bigger bucket and pull the full lot. But with this, you're not. You're pulling down the lines. So we've done them for Ilka plots or prefabs before, and they were horrific. They were like in and out, in and out, almost like a small shed. And to mark it out properly took forever. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you put like 40 pins on, on a plot. Whereas with this, it is just <laughs> There's nothing. Line. There's yeah. just a blank canvas. Yeah. There's just nothing there. Sound, let's see it working then. Let's go. So all he has to do, he's got the line on the screen, he just has to sit above the line on the screen and then he can pull straight back. So it is like lining yourself in with a your string line. I'll just log into their account and then I can show you the screen. Like I say, this is the first time I've actually met him. Normally, I don't need to come to site, but even on site, I can jump on his machine here. These we don't need to request access because we do all the models and all the work and all take all the surveys off. But that's why he's digging there. So any web browser you can get on. Any web browser. Though. Yeah. That is his screen now as he is digging. Some of the other systems have like weird security protocols, so you can't be on different accounts or you've got to have a certain account with a certain machine. This is just a code you log in. So he's digging there, you can see the either side of the footing and then the centre line. So trade secret, we code the footings, you see he's got a green one and a blue one. Yeah. Because we layer it up, so it just tells him what bucket to have. So we've got a 450 bucket and a 600 bucket, or he might have a 900 bucket. So we call that the layer when we create the model. Right. So when he picks on the line to dig it, it tells him. Yeah. So he's got the, the cut and fill to the left hand side of the bucket, cut and fill to the right hand side, the elevation is at. If he actually selected the line to go left and right, then that'll tell him left and right there the way the question mark is. He's out of the design and everything because he's gone off the line because he's obviously putting some muck in the dumper. But once he's over the surface, it will give him cut and fill. 1400 is a, is a dig depth, but I'll get him to pick the line. In fact, I can pick the line here. So if I hold on to that and I go polyline steer to, so now it tells me how far off that line is. So you can either have a 3D line, dig to the height of the line, surface for all the plots, surface for a bit of the plots. It'll dig position to a line, position and offset to a line. You can dig to a surface, to a grade, to a plane. You can even draw sections on a line. You know, if you had just a battle line. So for POS areas, you've normally got a 2D line with just a level. So you put the line at the level and just pick it and say, dig me to a banking of one in three. It's much easier than doing models all the time. There's loads of different ways to do it. And they all do a similar job machine control. It's just... This is the one I had more experience of and really we, we, we picked it because you can do a lot more in the machine. You're not fixed to having to go back to a computer all the time, redesign a model, output in a certain format. It'll take just about any format you've got. Land XML, DWG, DXF, point files. You can see now, now he's over the line. We've got a cut and fill. So if you're not on the right area to dig, we'll see it out of design. You don't really need the left and right on the footings. Because you see he's got a 600 bucket, the bucket be. is the right size. Yeah, yeah. So he can see that he's in between that line. Charlie's getting some footage. A little drone up there. You could have another machine. 
and you could be digging something else out, you see. You could have a more productive time. It's kind of, it changes the, the, the kind of working dynamic. Even now the dumper driver is going to unload. Basically Justin can just horse all this out, dump it somewhere and then get a bigger bucket to tidy up later. So rather than having a dumper on hand all day and using a small bucket to move muck round, you can dig out with your small bucket, stick it in a stockpile wherever you can reach and then tidy up at the end of the day with your big gypsy bucket on. So he's just lining himself up on the line now and away he goes. You can survey with this as well. Yeah, right. So once he's happy with his trench, it can create a new layer and just take a spot level in every corner. What, by just dipping the bucket in? Yeah, you just press a button on the screen, yeah. And you can set it to measure middle, left, right, a bucket, or all three. Oh, well, I didn't know you, you can do even that. auto topo with it. Oh, well. So you normally do that on a dozer. So when you do your final trim, set it to topo, and it'll do a survey of the whole thing. But basically, if you need to prove how deep you've gone, he could press go now and it'd take a, a reading every 10 mil if they wanted. So from a QS's perspective, they could have a measured dig yeah. back to the office as to exactly what's been dug out. Yeah, just little annoying tasks. So when you take over the site and it's supposed to have been remediated, but the weather's been shit, so there's loads of slop on top you need to get rid of. Yeah. Basically, you just scrape it all off with your ditcher, get rid of it, and before you move every time, take a spot level. So every time you move the machine, you've got another spot level and you've got a grid then of like 10 metre level which tells you how much shit you've taken off. It's a simple job, but the little gains where you make the money. So it's not an over complex system, there's not loads of lines, no, no, no. it is really He's basic. Just that line, yeah. and then once you've done that, it'll just clear that little bit out. And then it's got a kick there. You're never going to dig no, all the way yeah. around that. It's just silly, it just collapsed. But the other little kicks and stuff, yeah, done it? Yeah. I often wonder if he's just watching telly in there. Right, so first time we've seen how amazing that has been um, to just dig those footings. The one thing people are going to comment on... It's my beauty. <laughs> is... Can you get all my chins in? <laughs> the cost. The cost? So, as before we finish the video, like there are going to be some Debbie Downers out there that are like, yeah, but it costs a lot to fit the machine. What are you going to say to that? No, it doesn't. It'll pay for itself in a, in a year, in a project. I'm not sure what the cost is for a cult full kit. So let's say a guidance system on a machine, it's going to be less than 30 grand, but I don't know exactly how much because it changes all the time. But it's not a great deal on a, on a machine that's a few hundred grand. You bang it on the finance, it doesn't cost no. The saving on diesel, the saving on man hours, the quality of your work, it's safer, greener. It just saves money. It's just people are frightened because they've never used it. There's no difference with digging with that than digging normally. It's easier, you just, instead of looking out your window at the ground, you're just looking on a screen. It's not like a computer game. You don't have to be some kind of GTA enthusiast who can drive stuff on that. And how many people are coming to you for, you know, the modelling? Not your modelling, but the modelling of um, Well, I don't do topless anymore, because <laughs> it's just a bit saggy. Um, no, there's um, more and more people are, but we can do it as any stage. We can step people off who've never done it before. We can train them, we can provide the models. It depends how companies are geared up. There's a lack of engineers, so people need them lads on site, lads and, and lasses more now on site, rather than just marking out and, or creating models. So we can do it. We can set the sites up, we can check stuff. It's, it, it's, it's growing. Once people have used it, like I was saying to Justin then, I've never had anybody who's used it come back and say, oh, I don't want to don't use want machine it, yeah. control anymore. Yeah. It's rubbish. Yeah. It takes a while to change what you're doing. So the groundwork all up there was saying, well, I've got notes to check now. I'm basically a dumper driver. But if they've got two machines going, they're going to get twice as much done. Because he, he, he can drive a machine as well. Yeah, yeah. He's just not quite as experienced. But it, it does level up the experience level a bit as well, machine control. It does a tidier job. So less experienced drivers can use it and get the hours in to make them better drivers. It's not going to make a, an absolutely useless, lazy driver awesome, but if somebody's wanting to work, it's the thing to use. So if he'd been digging those footings out and something had happened that he couldn't continue with doing it, he's got the modelling for the drainage. He can go start doing the drainage. Similarly, if they're putting the road in, they run out of stone or something happens, he can jump onto something else. He's not waiting for an engineer to come. You're not waiting, you're not relying on people. You still need people, but you don't need as many. And anybody who employs people realises that they're the issue. It's not that the people you've got are not doing a good job. It's getting people. Yeah. And there's people being, being, being soaked up by HS2 and by all these other projects. There's people don't want to come into construction. So you've got to keep hold of the people you've got. 
and it makes their life easier, makes them happier because they've got an easier job, they know what they're doing. So 